Hey fellow Breachers, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Pacific Drive. Episode 2, First Run in the Zone. Alright, let's get uh, going. So, current priority right now is to build a new antenna. That's what uh, Oppie told us to do so that we can navigate the zone a little bit better. And thank you all so very much for the support in the stream. I didn't want to interrupt the intro cinematic sequences, but, uh, but cheers to all of you. So now that we're leaving the garage, the auto shop, uh, let's go ahead to the radio station. So one thing that's important to note is right when you enter a new zone, the... Okay, newbie, I'll keep this simple. Don't want to overwhelm that little brain of yours. You'll need a few things to rebuild the antenna at the garage. First on the list is plasma. The woods are littered with plasma generators. Look for a research trailer or a spark tower. That's those antenna things zapping you when you get too close. Both are always accompanied by plasma generators. All right, so this is the map. Um, the roads are not procedurally generated, but the resources, buildings, and all that are. And then points of interest are marked here. And you can mark down on the map if you want. And then there's also a legend, but right now it's mostly just buildings, different types of buildings. So we need to find and scan a plasma generator and collect materials and craft replacement parts. device is picking up on some plasma generators nearby. Your headset has a built-in scanner. Use it on the plasma generator and it'll figure out the tools you need. So a plasma generator yeah, looks like it's ripe for the picking. Can't get at it with your hands though. An impact hammer will do the trick. So we need to make an impact hammer. So we go to the logbook here. This is the plasma generator, but essentially you get plasma and glass from it. Perpetual stability, which is the condition of the zone. The instability storm will not be chasing you here unless it is summoned. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the details about that for spoiler reasons. So we need to make ourselves an impact hammer. And it wants me to add it to the to-do list. Let me just clear some of this logbook pings that I don't think are uh, immediately necessary to read. So in blueprints, impact hammer and hit Charlie or C to add the materials to the list. Find those materials by any means necessary. No one's coming back ever again, so go on and take what you need. Transports, homes, outposts, facilities, they've all been abandoned since the zone was decommissioned in 87. Most of those structures won't even be there the next time the instability scrambles the area. So loot to your heart's content. Just loot away. So there's different types of buildings. Right now, I'm in an Arda. Um, an Arda-style building which typically will have supply cabinets with um, gas cylinders and, and um, chemicals, which are important. And then there's also Look at computers you. The and electronics. On your own. They grow so fast, don't they? And I'll be back at the helm. Been a long time, old gal. Didn't think we'd uh, talk again after that whole Sasquatch incident. Yes, I was hoping to go another decade without hearing your voice again. What did you finally talk Francis to death? No 
Hello to you too, Oppy. And no, I'm still here. So, this is our first scanned anomaly. Letter fragment, date unknown. Dear Magni, Dear Maggie, once again, I miss you and the kids so much. I'm sorry I haven't written sooner, but it's been crazy out here. I have a few moments right now, so I figured it would be good to put pen to paper. I hope you don't mind the handwriting being so wiggly. But me and the guys are in a, a bit of a pickle right now. You see, our van got pulled up into a tree. I'm afraid I can't explain exactly what happened. Oh, exactly what happened. Top secret things and all. But we're safe. Trust me on that. We also have two hours to wait before rescue comes, hanging 50 feet above the ground and right on a ridge. I'll send this as soon as we get back to the barracks and write you a much better letter after. But in the meantime, here's a picture. I sketched it out while we were waiting. If there's one thing we have up here, it's a heck of a view. So this is an abductor. Damage type is unknown, and it is found at least in the damp forest where I am currently in. That's the zone I'm in. As you can see at the top there, damp forest residential. So, doing a little bit of uh, loot gobbling. Oh, and here is some uh, meeting notes. So there's a lot of uh, lore to be found in both the form of notes and also audio logs. So, meeting minutes, September 16th, 1949. Celebration of the founding of SRR. What our future will look like, addressed by Ophelia Turner or Oppy. Open ideation session with consultation from Ophelia Turner on experimental setups. This is a wrecked car, but it has a little fuel. If you hold T, you can transfer everything immediately into your trunk. That is a material. So as you can see, the materials get moved, but the notes don't. You have to select the notes independently. So for the impact hammer, I need two gears. But if I go up here, I can make gears out of scrap metal. One and two. This will show where the material is and what tier it is. The craft mat, um, or this craft mat can only craft up to tier one. So it's not gonna be able to craft everything for you. It will show you where it is. So it's in my backpack, not in the car or not back at the car shop. Now I can go to the impact hammer and with the scrap metal, gas cylinders and gears that I have, craft myself an impact hammer, which looks like this. Smash plasma generators for materials. And just like that, I have myself some plasma. Only one of the five that I require. So it'll be up to me to find the other four. So storage is space dependent, not uh, not weight dependent. A lot of fabric. And a steel sheet. That's nice. Steel sheets are kind of expensive to craft. Hey, uh, uh, driver. I 
I bet you're dying to hear all about the remnants by now. Oh, can you not? I'm a little busy trying to keep them alive. I'll keep to the basics, I promise. They deserve to know what they're getting into. Fine. I'm giving you 60 seconds. That is not nearly enough time to get... 55 seconds and counting. Okay, okay, okay. The remnants, in short, they're old objects that do all sorts of weird things. They bind themselves to people, and, and you're the latest victim. You and the car are inseparable now, so get acquainted. Once the remnant is bound to someone, they become gradually more obsessed with it. It takes over the victim's mind, until they go crazy and run off into the zone with it. No one has ever been able to resist its siren call. That fixation is probably worming its way into your brain as we speak. Fun. This is I like the first time we've ever got our hands on one. Uh, but we know all about the past remnants. And oh gosh, this one time it materialized as an old copper kettle. And the tea that came out of that thing, it was... And now I'm splitting the transmissions going to your receiver. Anything critical to your immediate needs will broadcast directly and immediately to your radio and headset. Anything not mission critical will be on a low priority frequency. Those transmissions will be recorded and indexed for you to listen to at your leisure. And by low priority, I mean just about everything that comes out of Tobias's mouth. So that little alert marker that turned red meant that the abductor there grabbed the car briefly and damaged it. Uh, however... Hey, abductor! Go mess with that flare. Yeah, fetch. Piss off. We are looking for plasma, and here we have another source of it. Also important to turn off your car, turn off the headlights, because if you don't turn off your car when you hop out, or you don't turn off the headlights, you'll drain the battery and drain the fuel. And there's no sense in draining your car needlessly in a game, a survival game. So here we have what is called a spark tower. Our second anomaly. Now I'm not going to read these all, but I will give you the cliff note version. Spark towers are uh, fueled by uh, the plasma generators that are at their base, and they zap you. And being zapped is not fun. But you can disable them by busting up the plasma generators that they're attached to. Now, if we wanted to refuel our car right now and top up our fuel, I'll go ahead and do that. Driving the fuel can. We haven't used a lot of gas, but I can keep the fuel can on me and siphon from other cars. So there's a bunch of different sources of fuel that you can find out in the wild. There isn't, however, a lot of sources of electricity. There are ways to use these spark towers to charge your car, but not really in a safe manner. So, it's best to conserve the electricity of your car. Now, of the HUD that you see here, the durability of my current tools is on the lower left. My hot bar is in the middle with one, two, three, four, impact hammer, scrapper, pry bar, and flares. Top left is the direction of my car. So 79 meters that way. And then also my HP, which is a hundred, and the current radiation of where I'm standing, which is currently zero. And then the bottom right is the um, interaction that I can have with the tools. So I can activate the impact hammer with left click. I can throw it holding right click, which is how I threw that lit flare. So if I go with the flare again, as you can see, left click activates the flare. And then right click allows me to throw it. 
And then there's always the ability to hit F to kick things. So now I have four of the five plasma that I need. So far, so good. Oh, I think we're about to get abducted. Nope, he left us alone. This uh, weird shimmery light is the map edge. I can't go beyond that. You can pick up flares after you've thrown them, uh, but with that said, they do burn out rather quickly. Like a few minutes. All right, this is another anomaly, I think. It is a puddle. There we go. And potholes are just the type of anomaly that you should probably not drive into quickly. Oh, uh, that's another anomaly right there too. A bollard. So the bollards are anomalies that pop up from the ground and uh, really want to make you slam into with your car. Best to avoid, lest you We'll need to replace some bumpers. So here's an example of lighting a uh, flare, dropping it, picking it back up. Ooh, a mechanics kit. Very nice. So this is another Arda uh, container that I'm in, which typically will have um, chemicals, which is a pretty handy resource to have early on. found in these hazmat cabinets. Now, if you um, don't find things easily, there is a way for you to turn on um, highlighting of all things. So I'll turn that on. It's under accessibility, actually. I'll turn that on just to show you um, high visibility loot. So that will show you, as you can see, I missed a toolbox over here and a locker over here, giving you somewhat of like an omniscient view, but you're able to like x-ray loot through walls and the like. So it's a setting I usually have off. There are a few special circumstances where it's really nice to have on. So I might toggle that on briefly from time to time when I need it, but I'm not gonna rely on it uh, normally. There is a lot of abductors around. All right, my scrapper tool is getting pretty worn out, but I do have the materials for a new one. Uh, so there's battery jumpers. So I, I did mention that um, you can find fuel kind of everywhere, unless this specific area that you're in doesn't have a lot of cars or fuel. But if you wanted to recharge your battery, you can make a battery jumper, which is batteries, copper wire, and electronics. And it is a, it's a one-use thing that you hook up to your car's battery to jump it and add some power to it. Um, at this point, what you can also um, craft a crude door and stick that on the trunk. And then we're also missing a panel here, a headlight there, and a panel there. So let's get the panels first, because it's daytime. I don't really need headlights. So here's a two crude panels. One there. And one there. Splendid. Is there an extraction looter mechanic? Yes. Let's keep looking for plasma.
Well, I will make a pit stop to this car, because this car looks to be made of steel, not crude plastics. Yep, steel door. Steel panels. Because scrap metal and steel plates are pretty handy to have early on, as crude pieces on your car uh, don't have really good durability. They break often, so replacing them often can become expensive. Uh, so aiming to have a, a, a slightly more rugged steel vehicle is definitely useful. You can see this is all crude stuff. I might, however, want to get some rubber from the tires. Because tires do get worn out and will need to be replaced just like everything else in your car. My scrapper tool is about to go. I'm going to huck it at one of the uh, abductors. See if they'll go for my scrapper. And I'll make myself a new one. Nope. Oh, that abductor is a little mad at me playing fetch with him. Is he going to grab us? Uh, maybe not this time. Oh, see some more plasma. But I am going to stop at this Arda building. Because early on, we are a mite bit resource hungry. I should also scan the hazmat cabinets. So everything in the game, like everything in the game, can be scanned. As you can see. And I like to kind of inbox zero it. Most of this stuff that you're scanning isn't all that important to read off. But uh, like what to expect out of lab computers or supply containers, big deal. Looking good. Ooh. That looks interesting. And if you're wondering, the spark tower does try to kill you. So I stood left of the plasma generator and it sent a, uh, it sent lightning my way, so that I. Well, it looks like you're near one of the old gorilla radio stations. That ought to be prime pickings for antenna parts. I've loaded its approximate location to your map. Look for an antenna tower uh, up on a hill somewhere. So she mentioned maps, and here, as you can see, we can put a waypoint in. I would like to check out whatever it is up here on this hill that I spotted. I have very terrible tires on this thing. So as you see in this mud, I have almost no traction and the yellow alert on my dash is the alert for poor traction and now I'm getting alert for uh, elevation. Alright, so this light was actually just a blocked exit, so it's of not real any importance. Uh, while I'm up here, though, um, I am missing a headlight. Let's see if I can't craft one. Yeah, I can. Oh, 
Oh, shit. My, my. Where are our manners? Uh, driver, we never introduced ourselves. Not really. Tobias Barlow, former Artem maintenance manager. Oh, and, um, here with me is Dr. Francis Cook. I was a R&D scientist researching limb technology right here in the zone. We live right in the mid zone. Just, just a hop, skip, and a jump over another big old wall from where you're at. Oh, and, and that old bat over there? That's Dr. Ophelia Turner, former director of research and development herself. The mother of limb technology, the maven of electromagnetism. That's enough. Resident party pooper. Here we have a little bit of fuel station. I'm not low on fuel, but we might as well fuel up. Boys only, huh? I'll see you to that. So basic locked doors that are open with pry bars. And loot crates. Did I miss anything? Pro probably, but yeah, a little backpack. Ooh, a flare gun. Cool. That's an unusual find this early in the game. Nope, stick it in the, uh, the trunk there. I really need it right now. So let's head to the radio tower. There's obviously more to loot. Uh, what I will say about loot, uh, that's a steel car. I'll stop for that. Is you don't really need to loot everything. Some things like the trunks of rare vehicles or better vehicles will typically have a lot more loot than just like, you know, worn out wrecks. Um, so to save yourself time, there are definitely some vehicles worth living and some that, unless you're desperate, it's very appropriate to possibly just skip them over. Now, at the start of the game, you're poor and every, every little bit of resource counts, but that situation rapidly changes where you no longer need to be a loot goblin. Unless you want to be. There is definitely resource grinding in the game. Uh, especially strategic rare resources that you need a lot of for improvements in building and upgrades and the like. But, uh... Unless you never loot anything, generally you're going to have a, a decent amount of, like, glass shards and duct tape and plastic and scrap metal and the, and the like. So as long as you're looting a little bit, uh, you probably will be okay for the non-strategic, non-rare stuff. And you can always do a quick pit stop by just, like, a rolling stop, by grabbing whatever you find in the trunk, leaving the car on, and don't even, unless you're on a hill or something, don't even necessarily put it in park. Can I stop being Luke Goblin? Yes. In this game, yes. There's not really a lot of games that I find it tricky not to, actually. 
So collect parts from the station. So I need the broadcast transmitter. Instability's ticking up by the second. But you can't get back the way you came. The instability makes all routes one way. And that's where my Octavice comes into play. It'll get you back to the garage, but it needs to be charged first. And to do that, you'll need anchors. Take a look at the Octavice display. It maps all anchors in the nearby area. Find an anchor and feed it to the Octavice to charge it. Uh, but don't you worry your pretty little head about how it works. You'll be out of here soon, so there's no reason to learn more about limb technology than you need to know. So what she just said is incredibly important. In order to leave a zone, the zone must have gateways, which this one does. And you have to charge your arc device with anchors. So there are four yellow circles on the map here each one indicating uh, the rough location of an anchor. The smaller the circle, the more certain you are about where it will be specifically. And we have to collect those anchors in order to get back to the garage. So I'm doubling back the path we came uh, to get the anchors that we drove by. I keep thinking, the way you're helping our friend here right now, seems positively helpful. Right. Seems like me. You're looking to turn a new leaf or something? The only thing I want to look at is a 12-year-old whiskey. And the back of this breacher's head when I sent them packing. But isn't it worth taking a detour to run just a tiny little test? Can't think of a worse way to spend my time. Please. I've seen you manipulate waveforms with your right hand and knock back a double with your left. Or am I to understand you've lost your touch? What I'm understanding is that you won't shut the hell up until I test this remnant. <laughs> yep. Fine, stop crowding my frequency. What? Wait, really? Hoppy, darling, you never give in this easily. What's what's going on? Francis? Uh, yes? How have you not thrown him to the bunnies by now? <laughs> 80 years old and only getting sharper by the day. You're a legend. You're a role model. I'm giving you 10 seconds to get out of my... Okay, okay, we're signing off. Hey, driver, good luck out there. Uh, and watch out for the bunnies. They are a doozy. So this is an anchor. It's worth reading this one. So, private field notes, Dr. Mensa, March 30th, 1970. We've now completed the process of standardizing and replacing all the anchor mounts and infrastructure. These mounts should be far more durable, steadfast against weather and atmospheric changes, and resistant to any corrosion. This has been a lengthy and difficult process, marred by endless delays. It is my hope that most of these mounts will hold for at least 50 years, but many projections suggest two or 300. That's far longer than many anchors themselves. This was, I believe, worth it. As usual, I will be compiling and submitting my full casualty list by uh, 10 hundred hours tomorrow morning. And picking it up. Those anchors may look like glowing balls of magic, but it's limb tech through and through. Don't be scared. They haven't exploded in anyone's face recently. So this that I'm holding is an anchor. A stable anchor. There's different types. And we have to stick this in the arc device. Like that. And it charges the car's capacity to return home. Well, the we're getting abducted again. Already. So only activate when you're absolutely ready to leave. You 
you do not want to get caught in the storm that follows. I am going to collect all of the anchors in the zone. All four of them. But what she just said was very important, which is that when you have enough energy to gate home, you can activate a gate. But when you do it, it activates a storm. A very, very radioactive storm. So as soon as you activate a gate, you need to book it to the gate. And the gates you can only activate when you're a certain distance away. Uh, so it is a bit of a time race to get there. So don't, don't dawdle. And there's another stable anchor there. I'm also going to refuel at this pit stop. Might as well have a topped up tank. Don't think I was going to go empty, but... You kind of don't want to go empty when you're racing to escape. Not so good. Anchor number two. Chief Dog, thank you for the bits. And thank you, everybody, for the, uh, the hype train earlier. As I typed out, I didn't want to necessarily interrupt the uh, intro cinematic and sequence. But uh, cheers to all of you. And if it seems easy so far, it's because this is the, uh, the intro mission. Don't worry, it ramps. Working review mirror? Oh, you have one. In fact, you have two and three if the uh, arc device wasn't blocking it. All right, we are coming up on yet another anchor. So I'm gonna mark down the fourth one, which is somewhere behind us a little bit. But I'd also like to get plasma. Plasma is not an entirely uncommon resource, um, but it's typically most common in zones with spark towers, and not all zones are going to have spark towers. So until you have plenty of plasma, plasma is kind of nice to have. Are there actual enemies that can kill you? Uh, you can die. I don't want to say more than that, but yeah, you can absolutely die. Whoa, speaking of which, we just got thrown around by a bollard. Thank you, bollards. Oh, it's doing it again. I think I'm upside down now. Yep. Thank you, bollards. So... If your car is flipped, and in this case, I'm very surprised that I wasn't the one that flipped it, uh, you can do an emergency t uh, teleporter warp. Um, what I will say about this is be very careful that you're warping your car to flat terrain. The game will allow you to warp it um, on hilly terrain, but if the car warps into, like, terrain, it will collide with the terrain and your car will get flung and probably take a lot of damage and you'll have to race after it as it gets flung. So when you, whenever you have to activate an emergency teleporter, make sure the, the ground is as flat as possible. Because if it isn't, um, you, you're going to have a bad time. Now, let's get out of this bollard. Oh, so it's also worth noting, because this is the first time it happened. Again, I'm not spoiling anything that we don't personally experience. I'm trying to have this 
be as immersive for you all as possible and not be like, well, this is what's going to happen when I do X. I want you to just see it yourself. Um, often when you pull anchors, it gets very unstable around the, the anchor mounts. And that's what happened here. When I drove up here, um, there weren't bollards going crazy. But as soon as I pulled that anchor mount, it got real unstable and um, started throwing bollards everywhere around me. So in some cases, it might even be useful to park your car kind of far away from the anchor mount so that when the local instability happens, it's not throwing your car everywhere, which is what happened to me. Um, additionally, this is the route map. And as you can see, we have scanned stable anchors, abductors, spark towers, bollards, gas station, plasma generator, wreck cars, abandoned cars. I have not scanned everything though. So there are two things still not recognized. Uh, in some cases, you can find them on your um, your local map. So if I open the local map, I can see that there's a uh, a symbol here that that I haven't scanned, which is the gas station that I passed by. All right, so let's go get that last anchor. So instability is yeah destabilizing reality, uh, as the game explains it. There's pockets of permanent stability in here in the zone, but most, oh, I didn't mean to click there. But most of the zone is um, unstable and constantly changing. So you're meant not to stick around any one place for very long. There we go. So there's no mini map when you're outside of the car, but you can mark down locations on your route map in the car so that when you're on foot, you can see it. So yeah, I see the anchor over there. this point let's turn on the car point our car towards the gate location which is going to be like there and activate it so you can see a giant pillar of light where the gate is opened up you see that glowing pillar in the sky drive into it Yes, it looks like hot death, but it's so much better than getting scrambled by the instability. And on the map here, you can see a yellow wave, which is like a storm wave. And then the red wave coming in, which is the really, really bad eye of the storm wave. Tires are not meant to go off road. And I just broke a windshield. Or a window. Thank you for tuning in to Pacific Drive, which streamed as a marathon one time only March 16th and March 17th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that both no feedback can be incorporated because this was streamed as a marathon one time only. And also I ask for no spoilers so people reading the comments don't have the game spoiled for them. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamot.com or the description of this video have a link to it. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, viewers that turned out for this marathon, and viewers like you as well that made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow breachers.